Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my C video tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue covering struct linked lists. And in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to answer the homework questions from part 9 of this tutorial series. If you didn't watch it, I provide a link in the upper right hand corner. Basically, I told you to program out functions that are going to allow you to search through the products, delete certain products, and also remove those products from memory when they are deleted. Like I said before, in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to do all that. Now basically, all the answers that you need are right here on this screen. If we're going to be searching for specific products, all we need to do is bounce through the linked list just like we did previously. And all we're going to do along the way is check to see if the product name entered matches. If it does, then we'll print some information out on the screen. If it doesn't, then jump to the next one using the next pointer until you get to the end of the list. If you get to the end of the list, then say couldn't find it. Pretty simple. To delete products, we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to search through the list. If we find a match, we're going to delete. So let's say we're trying to get rid of potato. We'll get rid of potato. We'll change the value for next to instead point to lemon and let everything else be exactly the same. So that is precisely what we're going to do in this tutorial. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's the code from the last part of our tutorial, and I'm just going to continue writing out said code. So I'm going to come right down here, and the guy that I'm going to create first is going to be search for product and it's going to return a struct because I'm then going to also use search for product to find and delete said products. So it's going to receive a name, product name, and I'm just going to open this up the whole way so you can see it. Then I need to create another struct that's going to hold the current struct that we're cycling through as we're going through and looking for whatever we're looking for. P product. I'm just going to call it iterator, even though it's not really that, but the name sort of works. And we're going to start at our first node. And if you're at all confused, it's because you didn't watch part nine, so go watch that. Then all we need to do is cycle through the structs in the list until next returns the value of null. That's it. So we're just going to take this guy right here until, or as long as it's not equal to null, we're going to cycle. Then what I'm going to do is create an int, and I'm going to call it are they equal. And then I'm going to compare the first 30 characters of the two different product names that I have available using strn compare. And I'm just going to take the iterator guy that I have right here and point to the product name. And then the product name that was passed into this function. And then I'm going to say I want to check the first 30 characters. And that's all coming from this guy up here. See, product name, 30 characters. So that's where that's coming from. Boom back down inside of here. Then I'm going to say, well, just in case you don't know, this string compare function, what it's going to do is if the strings are equal to each other, it's going to return a value of zero. Otherwise, it's not going to return a value of zero. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to put a not in front of that. It's going to turn the zero into a one. And in this situation, we know that we have two strings that are equal to each other. So I'm going to say something like printf was found and it costs and then just throw in here a float and print out the cost for it. And then we can just go and get that product iterator again, throw it inside of here, and we'll print out our product name, and we'll also print out our price. And that's how easy that is. There we go, done. And then if I get to this point, I know that I can return the match. I actually found a match, and I'm going to return it, which is what was going on up here. Okay. Now outside of this if statement, we have a situation in which we did not find a match. So what are we going to do? We're just going to take the product iterator and change its value or change its reference to the next pointer in our list. And then we know if we get the whole way through the whole entire list, well, that means we didn't get a match. So we're going to come in here and we'll say wasn't found like that. And we'll just put product name because that's what was passed in. And then in this situation, we still have to return something, so we'll just say return null. Then we can check to see if there was a match based off of the fact if this returned null or not. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So, except for use the function, so we can go search for product, come down here inside of main, doesn't really matter where. And then inside of here, I'm going to say tomato. And of course, you could create a menu system very, very easy with this. Bounce in here, compile, 
execute, enter product name. Well, I'm going to say tomato first off, and I'm going to say $1.50, and then I'll say egg 50 I don't know, and then I'll say pickle, and whatever. Product centered, tomato cost $1.50, blah, 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 blah. Tomato was found in the system, and it cost $1.50. So that's how easy it is to search and find products. Now let's go and show you how to remove products. So I'm going to come up here again, because I'm actually going to be using search for product to find the product and then delete it. Well, this guy isn't going to return anything I decided, so I'm just going to go void, and we're going to say remove product, and we're also going to just accept a string that we're going to call product name, and again, I'm going to create a temporary holding cell, call this product, of type product, and I'm going to call this product to delete, give it a null value, like always, and then I'm going to use my other function here, I'm going to go p product to delete is equal to search for product, and I'm going to pass it the product name. Pretty nice. Well then, what happens if we do not find it? Well, we return null. So what are we going to do? We're going to say if p product to delete is not equal to null, that means we found it. Now we can do some stuff. In here, we know we found it, so we know we'll be able to delete it, so let's just get this out of the way. And we know that if we want to delete the first product, we must assign the next product in the list to the first node. So we're going to go p product to delete and check if it is equal to the first node. And if so, we're going to make the first node equal to p product to delete next. Else, we're going to need to get the product to delete and assign its next to the product before the product that is deleted. Well, how are we going to get the product that exists in the linked list prior to the product that we want to ultimately delete? Well, in this situation, just to make it simple, I'm actually going to create that product as a global, and I'm actually going to put it before search for product, and I'm just going to go right here, struct, product, and I'm going to call this p product before product to delete, okay? It's a little long-winded, but whatever. And of course, you would heavily want to comment this because it's a little odd. Okay, so this guy is ultimately going to store the product that comes before the product that is found by search for product. So that means we're going to have to assign this a value inside of search for product. Well, where would be a good place to do that? Well, down here around this area would be a good place to do that. And the reason why is we know we're going to have a match here and we want to keep this out of this area. So we're just going to assign this value outside of it because we know at this point in time, this guy is going to be assigned the previous product pointer reference every single time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say p product like this, and that's going to get the previous, and then it's going to be changed immediately out of thereafter, and then whenever this gets its return, meaning there was a match, then this guy right here is going to have the pointer that was previous to the match. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment below. And now that we have that set up, we can come back down inside of remove product, throw this guy inside of there, get its next, and p product to deletes next is going to be stored inside of that. Okay? If you don't understand what was going on, let's say we're getting rid of potato just like before. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I want the tomato reference. That is what was stored inside of product before product to delete because it's before potato. So this is the product before product to delete. What we're saying is we want to get the next value for potato and we want to store it in product before product to delete. So this is going in there. That is all that is going on with that bit of code. So hopefully that clears that up. And then after that, if we want to free up memory, well, right here we go. And we know that product to delete is the guy that we don't free up. So we just throw that inside of free. And then we get to this situation, which is that we didn't find the product to delete it. We say it was not found and just throw in product name because that's the only way we're going to find it. File save that and then we can say remove product. This is going to output it. We don't need search for product in this situation. Instead we're going to say get rid of tomato, remove product. And I had one little bug here, right here, remove product. I put two C's inside of there. Sorry about that. File save, open up the terminal, compile, execute, tomato, egg, fish, product center, tomato cost, blah, 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 blah. Tomato was found, it cost $1.50. Tomato was deleted. Whoops, I should have gone in here. Re-output the data just to prove that it's gone. Tomato $1.50, egg, 
fish. And there you can see, egg cost $1.50, fish cost $11, and tomato was deleted. It's not in the list. So there you go. That is how to cycle through and search through a struct linked list. Find that information, delete it. You already know how to enter it. You already know how to create the linked list. So that pretty much covers pretty much anything you'd want to do with a struct linked list. Hope that was fun with the homework you guys always ask for. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.